We're doing it now? Just, yeah, just go. Just, just, just go. go. The day two race for the first recap. That's yeah. right. Hey, what's going on, guys? Kyle Mazi here. This is the day two race the world first recap. That's right. Day two. We've got the uh, the Brood Prister Ovenac show here. So yesterday, you and I predicted yes. this boss would be dead. And Nexus Princess. And potentially Nexus Princess, yeah. I think more likely than not was maybe something said by, uh, especially stupid, one of the two of us. That was that was said by that foolish people. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so that didn't happen. We are watching Liquid now go to sleep with Brood Prister Ovenac still at around 30% health, uh, which I guess 24% health is their, is their current best, which... Is good, that's low, but it's not dead, and they are now 80 pulls into that encounter. Yeah, so Echo, at the time of recording this, has just recently started their day. I yeah. think they started it maybe a couple hours ago. They were in Mythic Plus trying to get a little bit more gear, uh, try to finish up some of their crafts before starting basically I suspect this. this. Is, yeah, they're, they're going to be working on Open Axe today. Um, it's going to be interesting to see whether they have a similar experience to Liquid, because Liquid Spirits, I think, are, are pretty good. They've solved a lot of problems with this boss today. Um, they've moved the boss in a good direction. But... Echo may have been able to watch a lot of that and, and steal a lot of that strategy. Or Echo may just also just be better at doing that job than, than Liquid were. And they could kill this boss in the next so, nine hours while, while Liquid are sleeping. It's definitely possible. I will say that you would... This is a quintessential like race to world first fight, right? Yeah. It's really strat heavy. It, it, the 21st man helps a lot on a boss like this. But what I will say is that the consistency of Liquid has proven to be something a bit of a challenge where they're not getting their eggs killed off every single time. Right. Having that balance between AoE versus single target damage has been proven to be a bit of a challenge. And it's it's one of those things that I think that you say that they, Echo could copy their strat. And Echo is probably likely to copy their strat at this point. Well, at, so least, at least in parts. Echo will, will use the best of either what they've been planning or what they've yeah. seen Liquid doing, right? Like, they, they, they have access to both of those ideas now, and they can use whichever they think but, is best. But the, the hard part is still making sure that somebody's marking the eggs every single time. Making sure that all eight people are getting the eggs every right. single time. What does your weaker world look like for that? Like, right. there's a bunch of other debugging that you're going to have to do that's going there to is, accumulate pulls on the So, well. that's the question, right? So, here is a look at the, uh, the boss progression graph for Brood Twister for Liquid. Look at these spikes, right? Like, look at all these early wipes they're having here. A question is, is this normal? Or can uh, Echo do better than so this, right? So I suspect the answer is yes, that it is going to be normal. It, it's The fight looks inconsistent with yeah. just the breaking I mean, egg. It, the, the egg break mechanic, which is the core part of that fight, is hard. It, it, has, it has certainly looked that way for Liquid. And I could see it feasibly being equally difficult for Echo. I could also see it being better or worse, right? Like, I genuinely don't have a good handle on whether Liquid have overperformed, underperformed, or exactly met the kind of so, race to world first level expectations we might have for them here. Let's talk about some interesting compositional stuff for Brew Twister. First off, three tank fight. Very rare do we see three, three tank fights. Typically a three tank fight... The third tank is doing some utility garbage where they're right. running around doing something stupid. It's typically like a prot paladin with spell warding doing some garbage. That's normally the value of the third tank on this fight. However, this boss is way, way, way different with the third tank. It's because your two tanks were getting smoked by the big spiders. Yeah, and they were pretty quickly deploying this third tank, and they've kept it from one of the earliest pulls through to this point. Yes. And they actually dropped a healer from four to three before dropping a tank from three to two so. in search of more damage, which... Yeah, I mean, the third tank, it, it does have some utility, right? The third tank is the Vengeance Demon Hunter here. Sigil yes. Chains is utility, but taunts are also really good. The Spreading the spider load across more people is good, and it also means that you're not having the tank debuff explode on somebody who's also tanking mobs, because the way this fight works is there's a tank debuff that puts a big dot on somebody, and when that, on the tank, yeah. when that dot expires, it explodes for damage on the raid based on missing health. So if you could have that on somebody who's also tanking spiders or the boss, unless they have like health pot ready for right before it explodes, it's going to explode for way more damage on the raid. So you do reduce not just tank difficulty, but also raid damage by going up to a third tank. But still, I mean, it has, it's, even with three tanks, tanks have been dying a lot for liquid on this boss. It, kind of interesting with their composition for DPS. We've seen three lizards, uh, yeah. two augs, one dev. Yeah. I think, but I think in general, this has been the melee cleave show where those frost DKs, that enhancement shaman. Frost DK has been top damage by a lot on on their pulls. Assassination yeah. rogue also is spectacular. Than the warriors. We are literally only looking at like the, yeah. the melee. The game. rep pally is in now, so they dropped the the holy pally into a rep pally which is something that very rarely happens. But it turns out, yeah, Prez Evoker's super OP, and you need a Priest for Fort, and it's not going to be a Shadow Priest. But otherwise, you would just want Prez Evokers. That healer is uh, not normally. 
Yes. That's something something else is happening with the HPS there. Some would say a bug with the uh, the Chrono Flames hitting more targets than it's supposed to thing. Uh, is is Brood Twister needing a nerf, I guess? Should we... uh, so I think Brood Twister very clearly will will get nerfed for most people that ever kill this boss. I think it's not going to be, especially the tanking difficulty is unlikely to stay like this. I think it won't be this reset. I think this, this boss is getting nerfed either next reset or in a couple resets, something Here, like that. Here's the thing that you have to look as well. Is at the atom level, you know, they're, they're pulling this boss at like 619. Right. Now, what I'm going to say is the gear cap of this patch is 639. So we are very far off of that gear right. cap. But if you're just like a, you know, a Hall of Fame guild, a, a guild that gets World 500, you know, cutting edge, something like that. Goodbye. Uh, bye, Kalamazi. You're going to be reaching this boss very soon. You're, like, you're going to be reaching this boss before you are 639. Yeah. You're going to be killing, like, you kill Rashanon, which is hard, but is, you know, was one shot by Liquid, right? Uh, that's going to be maybe a double digit pull count boss in the low double digits, something like that. If your then options are an Ovenax that is a brutally hard tank fight with three tanks and you're in a guild that only has two tanks, like that is going to be, I think, the kind of wall that will pretty urgently require some attention from Blizzard. I don't think it's a this week problem, but I think it could be as early as a next week problem for uh, a lot of the you know middle upper end of, of cutting edge guilds. Yeah, even Hall of Fame guilds. Yeah, I mean the Hall of Fame guilds even. I, I like uh, requiring a third tank. It should be. I, I feel like it would be okay if there was a fight that was like harder than average on the tanks if you two tanked it and easier than average if you three tanked it yeah but this fight is like harder than a lot harder than average if you three tank it and absolutely infernal difficulty levels if you try and two tank it which you know liquid might do end up having to do that for the damage check it's possible but yeah uh that that level of difficulty i don't think would last long for outside of the race to world first even with the extra gear that's coming i don't think it's going to be enough to uh, to stop that from being true yeah so that's kind of where we land on brute twister brute you know, I think this has kind of been a more interesting boss than I kind of expected in terms of just, like, watching the general progression on it. Now, whenever most people end up starting to play this fight, especially on Mythic, I suspect that this is just going to be, like, a copy boss. We just copied this right. fight that was pre-existing. But in terms of, like, watching the average progression, watching the race world first, I think it's been a pretty cool to fight. And there's been a lot of coordination, a lot, like, a lot of gameplay. A lot of it's about knocking the parasites in the right spot. A lot of it's about making sure you get to the eggs. Yeah. A lot of that has been systematic as well, making sure that you're going to get people assigned to breaking the eggs that they're already naturally near that's been something they've been talking about like okay you know what is our prio list here for who's going to go get this triangle marker which of these eggs should be put with the triangle marker that you know is going to favor the range type thing and uh, that sort of thing is going to be problem solving that every guild will do on this fight uh, a little bit differently but if you can especially if you're out there and you're going to do this fight the more you know, liquid echo and method comms that you can listen to to actually hear them solve these problems, the more they'll actually understand what they're doing. And that's the kind of things that you can't just copy from watching the kill video. I think overall, you know, liquid, I think is in a pretty great position. I think that echo is going to start, be starting their general progression on brew twister soon. And we're going to, I, th I suspect that echo is going to have a similar level of progress that we saw from, from liquid. I, I, I wouldn't describe today as great for Liquid. I think it's at, fine. At best, it's like, it'll be equally difficult for Echo, but at worst, Echo will kill it. It's hard to do imagine... Think, do you think that Echo kills it? I think it's possible. It's I, I would not be... Like, I feel like there's... there's No way that today was a great day for Liquid. So it's, it's, I mean, I guess there's a small chance. There's a, The best case scenario is you wake up tomorrow and Echo have been wiping at 55% for 100 pulls or something. Like, okay. Could that happen? Maybe. But I don't think it's... Real. I think... Much more likely is that Echo will do better than Liquid did today, I, and I think it's still very likely. It'll, like it's maybe fifty percent chance that they do about the same, and maybe fifty percent chance that they do quite a bit better. And some of that might come from being second and being able to watch the, yeah, the okay. Liquid progression, but some of it might also just be from the fact that we don't know if if Liquid played this fight well or or relatively poorly. But the, given the fact the boss didn't die, it's uh, there's the chances are decent that it was. It was poorly. Yeah. Okay, so talking about gearing a little bit, we saw all of the teams do basically about the same thing. We Echo, I think, did their gearing about as expected, where yeah. they were, you know, did all of their... They started at 5 a.m., they did all of their heroics, they did their M+. Some plus, plus, yeah. Most of their M+. Plus, I guess. And the, the first four Mythic as well, something yeah, that the definitely four. makes sense to do pretty early in the reset. And now for both uh, Echo and Liquid, and uh, presumably also Method, most of the easy gearing of this week is gone. And we are just looking at a few small things that can be done for extra power this week. 
that it, it's rare to do for a fifth boss, but might end up happening. Um, more likely it'll be something they do kind of over the next couple of days for an extra two hours here or there while, while a boss is buggy or while they're working on a weak aura or right before bed. It'd be like, okay, let's, you know, let's take a break and go, go finish farming that last trinket that somebody needs from M plus or whatever. But I mean, in general, there's not like a ton. Yeah. Of gear I mean, there was a, there was a crafting send this week and on, you know, a lot of people made a nice two hander, use their 90 gilded crests on an enchanted gilded crests. Um, one thing I like about this tier, by the way, is that you can do that even if you're not a Mythic Raider. You, you get Gilded Crest now, uh, either very slowly from, from RNG Delve maps. That's going to take a long time. Oh, okay. Last two Heroic. Yeah. 15 Gilded Crests each. That's really nice for... Like, if you're if you're just a Heroic Raider, you're going to have an Enchanted Gilded Crest on the third reset if you want one. And you get them from for nines for Mythic Plus. So yeah. Able to you also that. can get them from nines and M Plus, which M Plus has been kind of kind of tricky. Obviously not... Not doable, or it's doable, but it is, uh, there's some dungeons out there that are kind of messed yeah. up. So I think we might need to amend our prediction on... Yeah, the, the, let's talk about the reset, because uh, yesterday we were thinking that it was more likely than not a one reset tier. Given how hard Brood Twister is, that also implies that Kaibeza is harder. Y yes, and, and Max had... We, we, we talked to him at the end of the said, He said, it. just assume that Kaibeza is harder. Basically. Yeah, which, again, maybe it's not, you know, the, there have been times where that hasn't been true, but presumably... There's a, reason, it's, it's there's, a reason, there's a reason that Brute Twister is the boss that was pulled first. Yeah, which, I mean, it could be easier, or Kaibaza could be easier, but Liquid could have a killer strap that they don't want to show on it. That, you know, that's possible, but it's pretty unlikely. Mo mo more likely is Kaibaza will be about as hard or harder than Brute Twister. Silken Court, probably harder than both. Again, it's <laughs> not unprecedented. There have been tiers where you kill Painsmith and you're like, wow, things are only going to ramp up from here. And they do not ramp up from there. That does happen sometimes. But yeah. more likely than not is Kaibeza will be harder than Brood Twister. Silicon Court will be harder than Kaibeza. Anstrak might be harder, might be easier than Silicon Court, depending on how hard Silicon Court ends up being. There, uh, That one, there is some speculation that Silicon Court could be hard, the hardest boss this tier if that mythic mechanic is just as hard as some people are thinking. Yeah, but I, th I think in general, this is a situation where, assuming that, like, we're making an assumption that there's going to be just, like, linear progression. We're also making yeah. an assumption that, like, what we've heard is, you know, Max had an interview with us. It's like, assume that Nexus Princess is at least going to be equal difficulty. Right, which would mean... We're likely going to the, we're likely going to the second reset. I so, think just in terms of raw pull count that you're going to need for, like, mm -hmm. the entire instance... It's it's likely going to be pushing us to at least see the uh, just because like there's only so many pulls that you can do in an entire yeah type it, beat. exactly like if it's true that Brood Jester and and Kaibeza are both in that hundred ish pull range and we're you know we see Brood Jester die around like lunch tomorrow and then Kaibeza die around lunch on Friday right um, yeah now just how many how much time like how long does Silken Court take at best. Unless it's undertuned, unless it's like easier than Kaibeza and Brood Twister, we're seeing Silken Court die on like Sunday. And then Anstrak P1 is progging on Monday, so, and then you come back up with the reset and you kill it on Thursday or something like that. But we legitimately have zero information on... Yeah, it's all made up. All, all Silken Court or Queen Anstrak. Entirely made up. I think that I think the Kaibeza one is the stuff that we probably have the most... I wouldn't say information, but like the, right. the, the realistic... Like the most realistic uh, expectations for... But like... What do you think the chances are that Echo kill Kaibeza instead of Brood Twister over the... Like next... What do you think the chances are they go there? It's probably pretty low, right? I mean... Okay, even if you... I, I think you would never do that even if you thought it was easier at this point because you would be giving information on a boss Liquid haven't been pulling when you could be fighting a boss they have been pulling. Uh, so the only reason you would ever do that, I think, is if you... If you think that's a 15 pull boss. And or if you think you have the killer brood twister strat that then as soon as liquid gets it they'll instantly kill the boss but i don't think there is a, a strat like that on that fight given i mean that so there could be but i don't think out. it's possible if there's a killer brood, brood twister strat they're gonna probably end up showing it today i, don't know, I guess maybe. you just prog you prog next and you wait for liquid to kill it with their bad strat right and then you're like ah, you don't you don't you, hold on you don't do that where you like the, well you i mean you, at least you you Prague Kaibeza first, maybe. I don't know. Again, if you do that, then you're showing your Kaibeza strat when you don't have to. So I, I don't. I think it's all a flight of do fantasy. I, do think. I think that? Do I think that they would go to Nexus Princess first? I think there's a. I can. I can draw a couple of situations where they. I would. don't think it's. I actually don't think there's a way that it could happen. I think it's a dumb hypothetical. If it's actually a 15 pull boss and maybe and Liquid is overestimated, it somehow I, like this. This right. is the hypothetical that has to have yeah. happened, right? Where Liquid is vastly overestimated it to the point where I'm questioning, like, what the like, how did you know the, the that? System? That sounds less possible than 
the, the other the, impossible exactly, situations. Yeah, but yeah, I, I'm, I I'm ready to I'm ready to declare absolutely zero chance. I, I think that that's also like a stupid ass situation yeah. too, where we're just like I'm, I'm not hypothetical. I'm building something that's like not happening. Exactly. <laughs> no, no know. chance. But yeah, I think in general, it's just like in terms of raw pull count for the entire instance, I think we're likely to be looking to go to the second reset. Um, yeah. I think definitely more likely than not. Assuming, like, not a sure thing. I think yesterday we were probably, what, like 60-40 thinking that it was going to be a one reset tier? Yeah. Today we're probably, what, like 70-30, 80-20 thinking it's a two reset? I like 80-20. The yeah. thing is, like, I'm assuming that Silken Court is going to be above 150 points. Right, which a lot of people are assuming that. But it it's might not, not be it's true. Not, it doesn't have to be true. You know, Silken Court, even if the mythic mechanic is the same as it was during PTR testing... That is very much the kind of mechanic that a good movement plan will make a lot easier, and that's something that nobody who tested that boss had, except for maybe Liquid and Echo developed that in their hour while they were working on it, but everybody else was like, we were we were doing some very bad stuff on that fight. We, and, and Yeah, like you yeah. and I tested that boss, and we were both doing very bad stuff, and we only saw So it, it might be one of those fights where it's like, oh, this seems hard, and it's not easy, but it's a good strategy makes it a lot easier and makes it actually do yeah. a reasonable number of pulls. Yeah, I don't know. It's kind yeah. of interesting seeing that the melee comp is just continue to flourish, I think, throughout yeah, the entire raid. Kinda... Good specs are good. Yep. Uh, I don't know what to tell you. They're playing a lot of good specs, and they're all really good. Any any final thoughts on today as a whole? What's your, what's your prediction for what we see in the next 24 hours, I guess? Um, yeah, I would say I think... I, I bet that Echo will kill Brood Twister on their day, but it will probably be at the end of their day. Uh, and then Liquid will probably kill it at the start of their tomorrow. I'm I'm gonna think that Echo doesn't kill Brood Twister. Okay. By the time we record this tomorrow. By the okay, so you think in 24? So this is what like midnight Pacific, uh, on the 20th. Uh, you you think it'll still be alive for Echo? What time is it? 9 a.m. Yeah, it's currently 9 a.m. So they've been going for a little a couple two hours. Couple hours, yeah. Yeah, I'm going to say that they haven't had... I so you, Echo, you, you just don't think they're killing it on their day two? Yes, I don't think that Echo's right. killing it on their day. and I think I think they're killing it at the end of their day two. But I think that Liquid will have it killed by the time we're recording this tomorrow. Right, you think Liquid will kill it on their day three, and Echo will also kill it on their day three? Yes. I think that Echo will kill it at the end of their day two, and Liquid will kill it at the start of their day three. So I, I think that this will be a spot where Echo do close a little bit of that, that early, only seven-hour lead this time with the maintenance. Yeah, I guess... We'll see. Race is starting to get close, though. Closer than normal. Closer than normal, indeed. All right, goodbye. Hey, Zyra. Zyra says goodbye as well. Yeah. Later, gamers. Where did my chair go? Somebody stole your chair, man. I'm, I'm, sitting, sitting, in I'm sitting in it. Oh, yeah, yoink. Easy yoink. <laughs> We're all looking for the guy that stole your chair. <laughs>